Peace, family. This is Dr. Siddiqui Chevaye coming to you once again, as usual, uh, every Saturday with a different topic that is essential to regaining our balance. And I love saying that because it's true. A lot has happened to us, as I uh, usually share with you, uh, that it's not our fault. But it's still our obligation, responsibility to do something about it. So we must come together and get out of this mess together. We got in it together and we got to come out together. That's what you call community. Until we get community back, nothing will change. We tried everything else. Going to the government and, you know, pleading to everybody and so forth and so on. They don't care anything about us. They are our number one haters, and we must acknowledge that. We know that they have exceptions, that some of them will mix it up, but a snake is a snake, and just because it doesn't bite right away doesn't mean it's not going to bite. Stick around and see what happens. So we are eagles, and the eagles eat snakes. So we must rise above all of this stuff, family, and get in and bring out our godhood. You know, be ye in this world, but not of it. So today, I would like to present to you a topic on Kwanzaa. This is my last topic for the year. This is the end of the year topic, which is Kwanzaa, which is celebration time. Kwanzaa uh, is the celebration of life. A celebration of life. Whose life? Our life. As a people. We are the original people. We are God's chosen people. Kwanzaa means first fruit. We are the first fruit. We are. As the people of African descent. We are the first fruit. And everybody know that. But we must know that. And we must teach our children that. That they are the first fruit. We are Alpha and Omega. The first and the last. Don't let them fool you. Don't let them school you. They want to make us feel that they can do without us. But they can't. It's not even possible for this world to continue without the original people. So family, Kwanzaa. Again, Kwanzaa means first fruit. And Kwanzaa uh, is the celebration of life. Celebration of whose life? Celebration of our life. Of our lives. So, Se Kwanzaa is spelled with seven letters. K-W-A-N-Z-A-A. -A -A. And seven is a spiritual number. When you study numerology, seven means... Uh, or complete. Seven means perfection. So it means complete and completion and perfection. And they use seven all the time. A lot of people, well, other people say seven is a lucky number. There's no such thing as luck. Chance. Coincidence. There's only cause and effect. But us as a people, seven is a spiritual number. There's only nine numbers, family. One through nine. Zero is not a number. It's a placeholder. So every time you get from one to nine, then you start off with one and then a zero. And then you got 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And if that's one nine, is 19, then two zero. And it continues. So family, let us understand that if one is the first number, does one, is one in all the other numbers? If hydrogen is the first chemical on the chemistry chart, does all the other chem chemicals have hydrogen in it? Ask yourself that and study to show yourself approval. But seven, once again, is a 
is uh, a number that represents perfection and completion. Also, they use seven in, in different uh, other areas uh, when you uh, play crap, the dice. When you throw the dice out there, if you, if you throw it out there and seven shows up, then you're an automatic winner. Whoa, an automatic winner. You also have seven uh, days in a week, seven continents. You have, uh, when you're getting married, you have seven bridles and seven grooms. Just to give you an example of the power of seven and how people recognize that as a complete number, a perfect number, which which was brought about by our ancestors. So family, Kwanzaa is a celebration of life. Whose life? Our life, the original people's lives, the chosen people's lives, the first fruit lives, you know, which is us. We are Kwanzaa. And Kwanzaa is celebrated uh, in uh, ancient and modern Egypt, Ethiopia, uh, Kenya, and Tanzania. Those are East Coast countries that had that everybody in those areas came and, uh, and set up their trading posts. And each one of them had their own languages. So they got wise. They created a language with, with some of all of their words or terms in it. And the language that came about today is called Swahili. Swahili is a very simple language to learn. We must learn it and teach our children. But unfortunately, over here in America, we only know one language, and that's the enemy's language, English, which is not an, an, uh, a pure language. It's a lot of languages thrown together. They call it a bastard language. And the main three languages are Latin, French, and German. And then you got all these other European languages thrown in. That's why one word can mean so much, so many different things. That's how they, they get over on us with the word game. But we must study etymology, the original meaning of words, instead of using words that have always been diluted, already been diluted, flipped, mixed, and all of that. That's how they get over on us with the word game. And the numbers game, those are the two different things that they get over on because they switch up on us all the time. So we must know the original meaning of these words and these terms. Yes, family. Kwanzaa, commemorating our African heritage, the black Americans, the ones whose history was stolen from us by these vicious animalistic slave traders. Yes, our history, our language, our culture, and everything was stolen from us by these vicious people who hate us with a passion, always have and always will. And there's always some exceptions, but, you know, a snake is a snake. And a snake doesn't bite all the time, but it doesn't mean it's not a snake. <laughs> Come on, family. Let's use our God-given senses. It is what it is. And if it is what it is, it's going to be what it's going to be. So Kwanzaa is the celebration of life, our lives, our ancestors, our people. The one who God created first. That's why Kwanzaa means first fruit. That's the celebration of us and our ancestors. We must realign ourselves with our ancestors. And Kwanzaa is uh, based on seven principles, which are each principle is celebrated each day. So it's seven days. 
and it starts December the 26th through January the 1st. And I'm going to share with you those seven principles in, in, uh, shortly. But I just wanted to uh, give you a general background on what Quans is all about. Study yourself and, uh, and, sh and show yourself approval and pass it on because this is for us. Kwanzaa are is based on seven universal principles. Universal principles. Kwanzaa is not a, a, a religion, which a lot of people try to, uh, to, to make it a religion so that we cannot celebrate it. We cannot acknowledge us and our connection with the ancestors. It's done purposely. But we must not allow people to define who we really are. Some of our people have really been had because they're so caught up into the religion, they forgot to be spiritual. We are spiritual first. In the beginning, there was no such thing as religion. This only It was only life. That's why when people ask me, Hey, uh, Dr. Siddiqui, uh, what is your religion? I say life is my religion. I'm not going to allow nobody to put me in a box and make me feel like I got the only answer. And I won't even associate with my other brothers who have uh, other uh, religions. So we must peep the game, family. Religion is one of the number one tools that they use or devices that they use to separate us. Religion means to realign yourself back to your ancestors, to your creator. But spirituality is an individual self-centered thing. Your personal relationship with the creator, your personal relationship with the ancestors. Let's be more spiritual than ever before because the essence of us is the spirit of God which is right there within us. And when you look in the mirror, you see the image and the likeness of God. So you get two for one. That's why I say know thyself. Because if you know who you are, you know who God is. That's just how simple life is. Life is simplicity. But they created religion and all of that, some kind of spooky thing. Learning history about everybody that we can never become. What good is it? So they got us stuck in the first grave from the cradle to the grave. Every generation, the same old stories, the same old history of somebody else who we can't be and somebody who don't even look like us. White nationalism and Arab nationalism. When in fact, we are the creators of all religion, all spirituality, all sciences, all languages, math, you name it. We are the originators of all inventions that are beneficial to us as a people, to all people. I just wanted to, to uh, throw that in, family, to give you a bigger picture on why we should be celebrating Kwanzaa, which are seven uh, principles, seven universal principles that we should celebrate at the end of the year and go into the new year with those principles. And I want to let you know that uh, Dr. Ron Milana Karanga, the uh, chairman and professor of Black Studies at California State University, in 1966, he created Kwanzaa. And he went Sankofa. He went back in ancient Egypt, Ethiopia, Ke Kenya, and Tanzania and brought those seven principles forward because they still celebrate them to today. And he was a genius. I love that brother. He's a warrior. And I know a lot of people always want to find fault in everybody. You know what I mean? But let's always look for the good in each other. 
always. Because all of us been bit by that dog who, who had rabies. And we need to stop blaming each other and come together and get that damn dog. It only makes sense. Why blame each other? So family, thank our creator and our ancestors for Dr. Ron Milana Karanga for having the courage and the strength and the faith and the respect and the love for himself and our people to reach back Sankofa, and bring it forward. The seven principles of Ingu, which is called Inguzo Saba. Inguzo Saba means seven principles. That's Swahili. Kwanzaa is Swahili, which means first fruit. And the color scheme is red, black, and green. As you know, red is for the blood. Black is for the people. Green is for the, uh, the, 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 the earth. The rich earth that we came from. That's our, our color scheme for um, Kwanzaa. So family, in Philadelphia, I'd like to thank Queen Mother Maisha Ungoza. Sister Maisha, Queen Mother Maisha, she is the one that hosts Dr. Ramalana Karanga every year during the Kwanzaa season. And I'd like to thank that Queen Mother for doing that. I just want to acknowledge that family. We must give each other the acknowledgement while we're here, while they're here. And this will, the acknowledgement and will, will encourage us to, get, to have a reason to stick around. Let's do all we can while people are here. And it seems like people are more important after they're gone. Let's stop that. We must learn how to show love with respect while each other are here. And that'll give us a reason to stick around. So Kwanzaa family is something for us and Dr. Ramalana Karanga, he created that in 1966 after the Watts riots to bring us all together as a people because we have always been the number one target and always will be. And we must clock that in so that we can become the beehive. You mess with one, you got to deal with all of us. We used to be that way. We didn't have no whole lot of policemen in our communities. We policed each other. We kept each other honest. We challenged each other respectfully. And we must get that back. We must go San Kofa and go back and get it and bring it up and validate it. I know you heard this word, this, this bird, San Kofa. San Kofa is a West African bird. That is all his head is always turned backwards, which indicates never forget where you come from. But it has a seed in its mouth, and the seed it represents the future. While he's looking back, he's moving forward with the seed. The past and the future. And we are the past and the future. Forever. So, community, we must redevelop. Family, there is five things that I would like to share with you that we, we need to know or we should know. And the first one is this, is that Kwanzaa is less than 60 years old. Number two, number two is many people celebrate Kwanzaa and Christmas. Celebrate Kwanzaa and Christmas. Because don't forget, Kwanzaa is not a religion. 
is based on seven principles. The Nguza Saba. So let's embrace Kwanzaa, especially us as a people. And the leaders of these religions should uh, incorporate these universal principles. And the, and the principles are seven principles. And, and the first principle is Umoja, unity. The second one is Kujichagalia, self-determination. The third one is Ujima, collective work and responsibility. The fourth principle is Ujamaa, cooperative economics. The fifth one is Nia, purpose. The sixth one is Kuumba, creativity. And the seventh one is Imani, faith. And keep in mind, once again, it starts December the 25th. And each day, we celebrate one of the principles. The first day is Umoji Unity. And then Kuji Chagalia, the second day. Then Ujima the third day. Then Ujima, I mean Ujima the third day. Ujima the fourth day. Uh, Nia is the fifth day. Kuumba is the sixth day. And January the 1st, going into the new year, Imani, faith. Let's have faith throughout the whole year until the next celebration. And we must value these principles and keep them alive all year long. Now, that's not a religion. Don't let them fool you. Don't let them school you. This is something that we can call our own family. This came specifically for us. Everybody have their own stuff but us. Why do we have to continue to celebrate everybody else's stuff and have nothing we can call our own? Everybody want to demonize it. Beware of that family. So you got the seven principles, the, the Nguza Saba. All of these are Swahili terms, Kwanzaa, Nguza Saba. You know, so also, family, I'd like to share with you the different ornaments that are set up on the table uh, uh, to celebrate Kwanzaa. The first thing is the mkeka. The mkeka is a straw mat that you lay on the table, which is the foundation. Mkeka. M-K-E-K-A. Mkeka. This, the second thing you put on there is the canara. The canara is the candle holder. The third thing, the uh, mashuma saba. Mashuma saba is the candles, and it's seven candles. The first candles, you have three red. On the other end, you have three green. And in the middle, you have the black candle. Red, black, and green. And each day you light a candle that represents that particular day. Like I said, the first day is Umoja, unity. And then you light all the ones, and the last one is the one in the middle, which is Imani Faith, which is us. Red, black, and green. Whoo! All praises to the Creator. And we must communicate and realign ourselves with the ancestors, our glorious ancestors, who the creator blessed with the blueprint of life to lead, guide, direct, and protect us while we still here. Because we are the ancestors here today having a human experience. Don't you know that this 2%, which is the physical, goes back to the earth? And the 98% is mental and spiritual that goes back to the source. And it transforms. You can never destroy or kill the mental and spiritual. But this 2% goes back to the earth. So family, let's keep this house clean so that the presence and the power of God can always be present, can be there. 
and we don't have to go anywhere to communicate or tap into it because it's right there within. A lot of people praying too much. Why don't you just be a prayer? Just be. And I was thinking for a while, you know, when you reach a certain level, uh, level you always use your God-given senses. You know, you know, you're always open for the universe or God or the Creator or the Most High to speak to you. So you have to tap into the center of yourself, which which is the peace area. You have to be at peace. Then the force can speak to you. And I was thinking for a while, the difference between thinking and knowing. Thinking is for beginners. But knowing is for advanced ones. Because when you know something, you don't have to think. Raw food for thought, family. When you know something, you don't have to think. Just tap into what you know. Thinking is the process to get to knowing. But unfortunately, a lot of our people don't even think. We operate on emotions. And emotions is like the weather. It comes and goes. And that's what has always got us in trouble. Now, I mentioned to you the Mkeka, which is the foundation. Then the Kanara, which is the candle holder. And then the uh, Mashuma Saba is the seven candles. Then also you have the Kikumbe. The Kikumbe is the unity cup. The, the, uh, uh, another is the uh, Mazao. The Mazao is the crops. Always have uh, some of your crops there also. Your best crops. Fresh crops. Another thing you should have on there is is uh, the muhinde. The muhinde, the muhinde is the corn. And however many children you have in the family, each you should have an ear of corn that represents each child. But if you don't have any children, you should put one there anyway, which represents the potential child. Even though all children are ours. Now, why corn? Because when you look at the corn, you see all those kernels on there. And each kernel is a seed. And when you plant a seed, you get a stalk. And guess what? You have seven ears that grows on every stalk. So that represents that we'll be here forever. The last family, we have the Zawadi. Zawadi are the gifts. And the gifts should be handmade or and or educational. Not all this other stuff, you know, feeding these uh, uh these these uh <laughs> these people who who's about uh money. Yeah, all, they're all about money. And then they took God out of everything except for any money in God we trust. And then whose faces are on that money? Not ours. So stop feeding these money mongrels, you know what I mean? And then they use the money against us. And then we even advertise their names. Pay for it and advertise, pay, you know, pay for advertising them. And then brag about it. Not only brag about the name, but how much we paid for it. What kind of insanity is that? Put your own name on them, on your clothes. Produce your own clothes. We the one that taught everybody else how to wear clothes. They came out of them caves wearing animal fur and all, all this kind of stuff. We taught them hygiene. How to wear underwear. How to wear clothes. How to clean themselves up. How to think. How to speak. We gave, we gave the world civilization. And they took it, flipped it, and used it against us.
We got to go back and get it, family. We got to use that Sankofa principle and go back and get it and bring it up and validate it. But Kwanzaa is the time that we should be intentional, the end of the year and the beginning of the year. Like James Brown say, end it on the good foot and start it on the good foot. Oh, yeah. So these are the things that are the ornaments that you have set up as Kwanzaa. Yes. That's us as a people. It doesn't matter what religion you are. Those are universal principles that were given to us by our ancestors in ancient Egypt. Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania. And Kwanzaa is an official language in those areas. So let's teach our children Swahili. So that because language is energy, let's feed them our energy. Let's feed them our vibrations. Let's feed them our frequencies. So family, I gave you three things that you should need to know or should know. The first one, like I said before, was be aware that Kwanzaa is, is uh, less than 60 years old. And not only that, that Kwanzaa is centered around seven principles in uh, the uh, in Guza Saba. Uh, and know that a lot of people who celebrate Christmas also celebrate Kwanzaa. And all religions should have those universal principles. The fourth thing is this, family. Make sure that during these periods and these times that you bring the family together, children and all, and, make hand, and, and create handmade gifts, educational gifts. That's unity. That's community. And the fifth thing that we should should be aware of is that Kwanzaa is so strong and so powerful and so popular now that we even got the government and the presidents uh, announcing it. Oh, happy Kwanzaa. But to me, it doesn't even matter whether they do or whether they don't. But I'm just saying, just be aware of that. It's not that they, they, they love it. They know that they can't do nothing about it because it's so overwhelming now. It's practice. By, by by so many that they have to, you know, acknowledge it. So family, Kwanzaa, the celebration of life. Kwanzaa, commemorating the African heritage, the African heritage of black Americans that were stripped of their ethnic history by these thugs, by these animalistic people, by these haters, by these racists, by these oppressors. And we must come together and practice the Sankofa principle and go back and get it and bring it up and validate it. I truly believe that integration was another fake move to make to uh, fake us out to believe that we are equal. How can you be equal to something that that they had a four or five hundred years jump on you? Equal, and who even wants to be equal to them? If I'm an eagle and they're chickens, why would I want to be a why would I want to get caught up into the chicken coop, plucking at the ground, clucking and plucking at the ground when we should be flying high? Being above this world. And chickens can't even fly, can they? Well, they go from one place to the other, a couple feet, whatever, but they coming that back down to earth, even though they're birds. But we are the superior bird, the eagle. 
Understand that, family. Study to show yourself approval. Don't let them school you. Don't let them fool you. Kwanzaa is for us. Even though all those other people practice it because they're universal principles. It's not a religion. It's realigning ourselves back to our ancestors in the name of our creator. So family, unity is the key to community. As a matter of fact, unity is the master key to unity. So community a oneness a oneness community which is the most high God in which we came from first everybody else came later and that's why they hate us because they can't be in charge of the house of the rising sun and the house of the rising sun is your mind. Don't let them school you. Don't let them fool you. So I just wanted to, uh, you know, share this with you. This is my last video of the year and I feel good about it. I feel great. I feel terrific to share with you what I've been blessed with. And you don't even have to go through what I went through to get it. Giving is given freely. And most people call Christmas giving. It's not giving, it's called trading. I give you this, you give me that. That's trading, it's not giving. Giving is from the heart. True giving is not based on things. True giving is giving of yourself. Your energy, your spirit, your love, your respect. Family, I ask you to view my other videos on YouTube. The last uh, video, which was last week, was on uh, perspective, prospective. The one before that was it's possible it's possible and the one before that is we need the need for one another the need for one another and these some are some some powerful um subjects that we need to embrace as a people and this is what I have to share with you I'm giving it to you freely because I love to give there's no other feeling that is greater than giving especially when you appreciate it that makes you want to give more so let us appreciate one another let's stop blaming one another for what happened to us stop saying you need to walk in my shoes or no one can match my experiences Hey, guess what? Everybody know what hell is. All of us know what hell is. All of us know that fire burns. So there's many ways to get to those points. So let's embrace one another. Let's, let's share our experiences and use them as a testimony, not a burden. So we need some things we need to just let go and let God. They're only opportunities to learn. What did you learn from your experiences? Because if the blessing is in the lesson, we got to start learning. And learning can be painful. Remember you used to say no pain, no gain? Why well, when the pain come, we give up and give in? Because we don't believe it. But when you get, when you overcome the pain, you can't beat the blessings. The bless, blessing is in the lesson. Family, I love you. I bless you and I want you to prosper. Always remember to stay strong and keep your faith where it belongs. That's the challenge. 
because life is for the living. Let the dead bury the dead. And when somebody, and when some of us transition, let's celebrate that because all of us get a turn at that. Because every second, every moment, we're getting closer to the grave. This body. So let us enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. Because life is a journey. And it's all what you make it. So be careful what you call it. Also, family, do your best and let God do the rest. You got to know when to hold and know when to fold. How do you know when to hold and when to fold? You have to have a sharp discerning spirit to know the difference so you won't be using emotions. The very thing that always got us in trouble. Keep your head towards the universe where all strengths come from and never give up and never, ever, ever, ever give in. No matter how things seem, seem as emotions again, no matter how things seem, because everything is, always was, and always will be in divine order. God does not make any mistakes, but we do. But when you learn from your mistakes, it's all good. So keep on growing and keep on learning. You cannot go wrong. And remember, learning can be painful. But when you overcome the pain, you got big blessings waiting. Family, right thinking Right giving and right eating is holistic. Happy new life. Happy new journey. Happy new you. This is Dr. Siddiqui Chebaye. Letting you know that going to, good, going to the next year on the good foot with Imani Faith. Have a blessed one until the next time. Appreciate you. Love with respect.